could you decide not to have children because of the future facing our planet? This is a picture of my sister, Beck, and I. After studying environmental science in her late 20s, Beck made the decision not to have children. This was not a decision she made lightly. She was worried about the environment and what the world would be like for her future children. And she is not alone. A recent survey of our young people showed that over 40% of them felt no hope in addressing issues such as climate change. Working in sustainability, I understand these issues. There are so many big problems facing us, and at times it can seem overwhelming. But I'm also seeing some amazing ideas and solutions that give me hope for the future. Today, I'm going to talk to you about three of the big problems that keep me awake at night, and about how tiny houses could be part of the solution. As a mother of two, I worry about how my children and all of us will fare facing the impacts of climate change and sea level rise. People in islands in Australia and the Pacific are facing these impacts now. If we don't take action, by 2100, more than 100 million people in cities around the world could be displaced. I am fortunate to live on the doorstep of two of the world's most amazing world heritage areas, the wet tropics rainforest and the Great Barrier Reef. This is my backyard. But I worry about how housing our growing populations and the way we live is affecting these areas. And I wonder how we can keep more of our beautiful ecosystems for our future generations to enjoy. In addition to these environmental problems, more and more people are feeling alone or socially isolated from their communities. Housing is becoming less affordable, and people are working harder for mortgages that they may never pay off. Many people don't have the strong social networks needed to support them during these challenging times. So where do we start in addressing these big problems? I believe that we, as humans, have an ability available to help us. What is this ability? Our ability to adapt. In the past, our ancestors adapted by creating shelter and energy, which allowed us to learn and work and to achieve amazing things. By inventing the wheel, which allowed us to lift heavy things and to transport ourselves and our goods around. And by going from being hunter-gatherers to growing our own food, which allowed us to live longer, healthier lives and to spend more time doing the things we want to do. This ability to adapt has been our greatest gift, but it has also been one of our biggest challenges. Housing, energy, transport and agriculture are some of the largest contributors to our emissions and climate change. So how can we use our ability to adapt to address these big problems and create the future we want before it's too late? Part of my work is planning how we adapt to the future impacts of climate change, including sea level rise and erosion in our coastal areas. Adaptation can mean avoiding putting development in certain areas, changing the way we build to accommodate to these hazards, defending our cities with things like seawalls or vegetation, or retreating or moving away from the coast. Some of these solutions can be expensive. The United Nations estimates that by 2050, climate adaptation globally will cost over $500 billion per annum. As a city designer, I need to think about what we do with these areas. Should we be allowing developments in areas at risk of sea level rise or erosion? What about the people that live in these areas? And what about agricultural land, which may be subject to more salt water over time? What if we could develop these areas into temporary tiny house communities? Clusters of up to 100 houses could be provided in areas at risk of coastal hazards. What if I told you that from as little as 150,000 Australian dollars, you could own a tiny piece of paradise by the sea with a 10-year renewable lease with access to community gardens, sustainable living and renewable energy. These temporary tiny house developments could provide a use for this land and an income. Initial calculations show that for 10 developments over a 30-year period, we could generate over $200 million in revenue. This money could be used to protect our coastlands or to purchase additional land at risk. At the point in time that these areas become impacted, 
these tiny house communities could be relocated inland and the land returned to the community as coastal parklands and reserves. Temporary tiny house communities could be a piece in the puzzle of addressing climate change. Not only do they provide a use for land at risk of sea level rise and erosion, but they also provide an income to fund how we adapt in the future. So just how big is a tiny house? At up to 50 square metres, a tiny house is around one-fifth of the average house size in Australia, and just a bit bigger than the average house in Hong Kong. According to the Global Footprint Network, Australians have one of the largest environmental footprints in the world. If everyone lived like we do, we would need 5.2 planet Earth to sustain us. Tiny houses can almost halve this footprint. Less land is needed to house our growing populations, and less resources needed to build them. By living smaller, we can protect more of our beautiful ecosystems for our future generations to enjoy. So who would be interested in a tiny house? Meet Joan. As a woman over 60, Joan is seen as one of the most likely people to live in poverty. She lives on her own and at times is socially isolated. On a low income or pension, Joan is unable to get a loan to build a standard home. Meet Dave. Dave is a 24-year-old hipster living with his parents in the city. Dave is on a minimum wage and can't afford to buy a house. And although he and his dad have some great times together, his parents want him to be moving out so they can enjoy their retirement. Dave and Joan are just some of the people looking for flexible, sustainable living at the right price. Other people include retirees, single parent families, and people who are homeless or in need of social housing. Joan and Dave need a way to be able to buy a house. This doesn't need to be a big house. In fact, Joan and Dave and the environment can't afford that. Joan and Dave could live in these tiny house communities alongside like-minded people, reducing their financial and emotional stress. You may have wondered what happened to my sister, Beck. She is living her very own dream lifestyle in her tiny house camper van working in remote areas of Australia as a waste consultant. This is a picture of her with my two daughters. She's a fabulous aunt. So how do more people like Beck and Joan and Dave get to live this wonderful tiny lifestyle and be part of the solution in addressing these problems? I believe we have the ability right now to adapt. All we need to do is to change the way we think about housing our future. What I would like you to do now is to imagine that you live in a tiny house that has everything you need, with no power bills, with no mortgage, and most importantly, with no stress. A place where you feel connected to nature, and you have a community of like-minded people to share it with. Imagine how much this could enhance your life. And finally, imagine if by living this tiny life, you could be part of the solution in addressing some of the world's biggest problems. Thank you.